Hi guys, welcome to video 3 of our equilibrium unit. This video is based out of 15.6 in your book, and this is all about how we evaluate equilibrium using Q. And in this video, we're also going to talk about um, how to calculate the equilibrium concentrations if we're given the initial and we're given the equilibrium constant, very similar to what we did in the last video. We're just kind of taking it a step further. So what I wanted to do is just summarize the first two videos really quick for you. And so to start, remember that at equilibrium, the forward and reverse rates are equal. So the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. It's like a state of balance. Um, at this point, concentrations stay constant. They're not necessarily the same, but concentrations of the reactants and products stay constant because there's no net change since the rates are equal. The equilibrium constant was discussed, and the most basic definition using kinetics is that it shows a ratio of the forward rate constant to the reverse rate constant, which is Kf over Kr. But the equilibrium constant and the way that we use it is the ratio of products to reactants. You can express it using either concentration, in which case it's Kc, or you can express it using pressure, which is Kp. Remember that solids and liquids are not included when writing the equilibrium constant expression because their concentrations stay constant. So we use a a standard concentration and it's assumed to be one if you have a solid or a liquid, so you don't include them. The only things you include are aqueous and gas. Now obviously if you're looking at pressure, if you're looking at Kp, you're just going to be using gases. But if you're looking at Kc, it can be either aqueous or gas. And then finally, the equilibrium constant can be calculated using the equilibrium concentrations, so not the initial concentrations. If you want to calculate the equilibrium constant, you have to use equilibrium concentrations and plug it into your equilibrium constant expression. And then the final thing that's actually not on here is what is useful about the equilibrium constant. Why is it used? Well, we talked about when K is much greater than 1, there are more products. If K is much greater than 1, the numerator is a lot larger in terms of the value of the number. So if K is much greater than 1, there are more products at equilibrium. What that means is the forward reaction is more likely to occur. So we say that equilibrium lies to the right because the products are on the right. So the forward reaction is favored. If K is much less than 1, that means that the denominator is larger, and that means that the reverse reaction is favored because it lies to the left. So everything on the left of the arrow uh, is more likely uh, to be there at equilibrium. Okay, so what we're going to look at is we're going to start by calculating equilibrium concentration. So in the previous video, we discussed how to calculate an equilibrium constant when you're given the equilibrium concentrations. Or maybe you were given one equilibrium concentration and you had to calculate the other ones using an ice table. This is going to be very similar, but now we're going to look at calculating the equilibrium concentration from the initial concentrations and from the equilibrium constant. So when you calculate equilibrium concentrations, the same steps are used to calculate the equilibrium concentrations that were used to calculate the constant using an ice table. So this is all about using an ice table. We're simply solving for something different. Typically we don't have a number for the change in concentration, so that becomes x. So we do a lot of algebra to solve for x. We also need to assume that um, everything is in concentration. If, it, if it's Kc, assume everything is in concentration. If it's Kp, assume everything is in pressure. And then again, equilibrium concentrations are given as algebraic expressions. And we're going to look at an example. So in example one, it says at 2,000 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium constant for the reaction of NO yields N2 plus O2 is Kc equals 2.4 times 10 to the third. So I'm going to use the pen and I'm going to underline what's important. And we know our Kc is 2.4 times 10 to the negative third. The initial concentration of NO is 0.2. What are the equilibrium concentrations of all three? Okay. So what we need to do is we need to start with an ice table. Let's start with an ice table. Let's plug in what we know because we're given an initial concentration. So initially, we have 0.2 molar of NO. That's the only reactant. That's the only thing we're putting into the flask, which means we don't have any N2 or O2. Those are products. We don't have any at the beginning of the reaction. So there's our initial row. 
Now what we need to do is we need to look at the change row. When it comes to the change row, we don't know by how much it's changing because we're trying to solve for the equilibrium concentrations. So we actually don't know what is how much it's changing by. All we know is the stoichiometry of the reaction. So we know that we're making equal amounts of N2 and O2 because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm going to put that as X. Okay? You want the coefficient, um, if a coefficient is one, that's simply X. So we're making X amount of N2 and X amount of O2. Remember, because these are products, we're making it. So it's going to be positive. Then if we look at NO, we know that we're using some up. But if we look at the ratio of NO to N2, we're using up twice as much NO as we're making N2. So what that means is our change is going to be minus 2x. Because in this case, for the change row, we're simply looking at the stoichiometry. Now for the equilibrium row, we simply do initial either minus for the reactants or plus the change for the products. So at equilibrium, we have 0.2 minus 2x. And then for the products, we simply have x and x. So here are our equilibrium concentrations that we know so far, but we also know Kc. So what I want you to do on your, on your paper right now is I want you to write the equilibrium constant expression for Kc. So I want you to use the reactants and the products, and I want you to write the equilibrium constant for Kc. Okay, well, when you write the equilibrium constant for Kc, you have N2 times O2, you have products, divided by reactants, and it's NO squared. Remember, because this is Kc, we're looking at concentration. Now, we know that N2 times O2 over NO squared is equal to Kc. We also know that Kc, the value, is 2.4 times 10 to the third. So this top expression is our Kc expression. Then what we can do is we can plug in these equilibrium concentrations, just using the variables, into the Kc expression. So we have x times x over 0.2 minus 2x, that entire quantity is squared, and that equals 2.4 times 10 to the third. So we plug the values into Kc because we know the value of Kc, and that's how we can solve for equilibrium concentrations. So what we can do now is we just have to do algebra and solve for x. So the first thing that we can do is we can take the square root of both sides because right now we have x squared over 0.2 minus 2x, that entire quantity squared. So if we take the square root of the left and the square root of the right, we get x over 0.2 minus 2x equals 49. Now, we need to eventually get x by itself. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to multiply the entire bottom over to the right-hand side. So we get x equals 49 times the quantity 0.2 minus 2x. Use the distributive property, distribute the 49 to both. So then you get x equals 9.8 minus 98x. Well, add your x to the other side. You get 99x equals 9.8. So when you solve for x, you get 0 0.099. Now, keep in mind, you have to realize what that x means. This x is equal to the equilibrium concentration of N2 and O2. And then if we take 0.2 minus 2x, that gives us the equilibrium concentration of NO. So once you solve for x, you need to make sure that you plug it back in to actually find the equilibrium concentrations. So notice this just involves a lot of extra algebra, but it's very similar using the ice table and using the equilibrium constant expression to find one of them. Okay, so what we're gonna look at now is we're gonna look at applications of the equilibrium constant. The big question that we answer with this is, is the mixture at equilibrium? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use what's called the reaction quotient. So we always have these general reactions, and we define Q, which is the reaction quotient, as the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. Now, because this is looking at concentration, this is actually going to be QC. We can still have QP if we're looking at pressure. Now, notice that Q looks like KEQ. It looks like the equilibrium constant. But... The difference between the reaction quotient and the equilibrium constant is the reaction quotient, so when we solve for Q, that's at the current conditions. So we don't actually know if the reaction is at equilibrium yet. That is why Q is so useful. So each of these concentrations or pressures is at any given time in the reaction. 
So it's at any given time under the current conditions. And the whole, the whole point of this is to figure out, is our reaction at equilibrium? If not, what has to happen for us to get to equilibrium? So looking at Q, again, the big question is, why should we use Q? Why is Q useful? Uh, and again, it's to determine if the reaction is at equilibrium. So Q, the reaction quotient, is simply an equilibrium constant expression, but it's with non-equilibrium values. This is useful especially for slow reactions. Now, nature wants Q equals K, right? Nature wants our reaction to be at equilibrium. So what we do is we simply take samples of the reaction at different points, we plug it in and we solve for Q, and we, we compare that to K. We compare it to to the equilibrium constant expression. Now, if Q is less than K, okay, think about what that means if Q is less than K. Q is products over reactants. Either it's just like K, except it's at any point in the reaction. So if Q is less than K, what that means is this top number is too small, right? We don't have enough products. So that means that our concentration of products is too small so we need to make more products, right? So we're going to want to make more products in order to get it back equal. If Q is greater than K, okay, so if down here Q is greater than K, what that means is, if we look at products over reactants, products is now too large. So we need to make more reactants. So that means the reverse reaction is going to take place. Okay, so again, if we compare Q and K, when Q equals K, it's at equilibrium. If Q is less than K, like this top picture, then we don't have enough products. What that means is the forward reaction must occur. Now, I like this picture a lot because what this shows us is the arrow that the reaction is going to point. Right? It's either the forward reaction or the reverse reaction. So if Q is less than K, the forward reaction is going to occur in order to form more products. Okay? That's because reactants are consumed, products are formed, so Q increases until it equals the equilibrium constant. And then if Q is greater than K, what that means is the reverse reaction has to occur uh, in order to reach equilibrium because we have too many products and not enough reactants. So what we need to do to balance that out is we need to use up some of the products and we need to make more reactants. And so then what that means is uh, Q is going to decrease until it equals the equilibrium constant. Okay, so that's useful when you're looking at Q and K, and this is going to be a lot of what we're going to work on in class because we want to know if the reaction is at equilibrium. And if it's not at equilibrium, we want to know how can it get there.